Racing cars doesn't look, sound, or smell like quiet farm life. It's all about engines screaming around a track, gulping down gas, and spitting out fumes. But black soil is reaching black asphalt in a new way. NASCAR is now being fueled by corn-based ethanol. Proponents say such biofuels, generally made from crops and recycled agricultural waste, will help reduce dependence on foreign oil and support the rural economy. So Energy Now's Lee Patrick Sullivan went to the Daytona 500 for a look at how auto racing is taking charge of its energy future. Drivers, start your engines! NASCAR. The speed. The crowds. The corn-based biofuels? Do you know that Jeff Gordon's car is going to have uh, biofuels in it? What's that? It's E15. A blend of 15% corn ethanol to go into the mix of racing fuel. The E15 switch is part of a plan by NASCAR to be more green. But environmental motivations aside, the fuel still has to perform on the track. Will it? Remember, millions of NASCAR fans come to see fast cars. The only green they're concerned with is the green flag that starts the race. Before we saw it pumped into those highly tuned race machines, we went to Philadelphia. That's where Sunoco blends more than 70,000 gallons of E15 racing fuel that NASCAR will use this year. The folks at Sunoco have been working on this special blend for more than two years. Our big challenge here for NASCAR was to get the fuel from here to tracks all over the United States and to make sure that as we transferred the fuel that it's a closed system that there's no chance of the fuel picking up any water because that would cause an ethanol-based fuel to separate at a certain level. Separation is bad, really bad. It can stop a vehicle dead in its tracks. So the folks at Sunoco are now handling the distribution of this fuel differently than in the years past. In an effort to keep water and other contaminants out of the fuel, it will no longer be stored in underground fiberglass tanks at the various tracks across the country. That's because ethanol erodes most older fiberglass tanks. Instead, it will be trucked in for every race. That wasn't their only challenge. They also had to come up with a new fuel can. And here at the Daytona 500, the new and improved can made its debut. The addition of this hose right here and a couple other valves keep moisture out. Why am I so concerned with the new gas cans? Well, it's the only visible sign that NASCAR fans will see once the E15 switch has been made. Also, my cousin has to lift these things. That's him right there. He's the gas man for driver Denny Hamlin. Hey, cuz. Hey. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good, how are you? So how are those new gas cans working out? Well, it's a lot better than we expected. I mean, uh, we've done a lot of practice and everything, and, and uh, we feel pretty good about it. Now, I remember us being kids, and you, you working on your Mustang in your dad's garage. Did you think in 2011 you'd be working on a race car that had biofuels in it made from corn? Oh, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm sure I would have, uh, I, you know, it's just only been recently I've ever even heard of bio, biofuels. But uh, back when I was working on my Mustang, I thought I was going to be a driver. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't care what was in the tank, right? No, absolutely. Now, for those of you who think that race cars just won't perform Form well with biofuels? Well, here at the world's most famous racetrack, they've been running on ethanol since 2005. And here at Indy, it's not a blend. All cars race on 100% sugarcane ethanol from Brazil. They have high performance, high horsepower race cars can run on 100% fuel grade ethanol, surely you should have the confidence in your passenger car to at least run on a blend. The difference is these Indy cars are tuned specifically for ethanol. Most passenger cars are not. Cars that are labeled as flex fuel are the exception. They can switch back and forth between pure gasoline and 85% ethanol. It goes together smoothly. And speaking of switching back and forth, Driver Sarah Fisher wears two different hats. I mean, helmets. She's one of the few drivers who is also an owner. Now we've talked to the suits, mm -hmm. and we've talked to the ethanol makers, but you actually drive these things. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like driving with ethanol? 
Well, driving with ethanol compared to methanol, you know, there there hasn't been a really big shift in power. There hasn't been a really big shift in, in durability or efficiency. Uh, the only difference is smell. Back in Daytona, the first race with E15 is about 24 hours away, and we caught up with driver Clint Boyer. NASCAR was reluctant to even switch from leaded to unleaded, but it seems like you went from unleaded to ethanol rather rather quickly. Yeah, it was a you know fairly uh, easy step too. You know, one would think that it was going to take extreme measures and a lot of changes. Very difficult to be able to figure out how to use it, and it was, it was very minimal. Um, and actually, it was a game. You know, come to find out, we were we experienced more horsepower, cleaner burns. Um, you know, and a cleaner burning engine for the environment and everything else. So this has been a win-win for everybody involved. The result? Some of the fastest time trials in Daytona 500 history. A fact that didn't surprise General Wesley Clark, who now co-chairs the ethanol advocacy group, Growth Energy. We had always heard unofficially that at E20, E30, there's really no drop-off in, in mileage, and there's a potential for a big boost in performance. Most of the race experts I spoke with say the faster times had more to do with the Daytona International Speedway resurfacing their track. But the ethanol people are getting their message out to the heartland. Did you know that this is the first year they'll be running biofuels in the cars? Yes, I did. And what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a fantastic thing and it's about time and I wish we had it in more regular cars. In Daytona Beach, Florida, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Energy Now.